services. I want to thank all of you for attending. I see many faces that I've gotten to know and over the years and in the last few months in particular, and I especially want to thank our law enforcement partners like the Paternal Order of Police, the National Sheriff's Association, the Major City Chiefs of Police Association, the International Chiefs of Police uh, Group, and to many other officers from all over the country that are here today. I know this issue of forfeiture is probably your top issue, the thing that you've talked to me most about, and the thing that President uh, Trump has indicated that he understands and supports you in. So thank you for your service to the country and all you do to make this a safer place. As any of these law enforcement partners will tell you, and as President Trump knows well, civil asset forfeiture is a key tool uh, that helps law enforcement defund organized crime, takes back ill-gotten gains from them, and prevent new crimes from being con uh, committed, and weakens the criminals and their cartels. It weakens the criminal organizations when you take their money, and it strengthens uh, law enforcement when we can share it together and use it to further our effort against crime. Even more importantly, it helps return property to victims of crime. Civil asset forfeiture takes the material support of the criminals and instead makes it material support for law enforcement. Funding priorities like new vehicles, bulletproof vests, opioid overdose uh, reversal kits, and better training are all paid for by asset forfeitures. In departments across this country, uh, funds that were once used to take lives are now being used to save lives. And the, it removes the inner uh, instrumentalities of crime, such as illegal firearms, ammunition, explosives, and property associated with child pornography uh, from criminals, preventing them from being able to use these tools to further their criminal acts. President Trump has directed this Department of Justice to reduce crime in America. We take that seriously. I know that's a challenge. We intend to meet it, and I know you do too. We continue to encourage uh, civil forfeiture whenever appropriate. We will do so. At the same time, we must protect the rights of the people in this country, the people that we serve, law-abiding people whose property is used without their knowledge or without their consent should not be punished or taken uh, because of crimes that someone has committed. I know we all agree on that. And we have to be careful and do this thing in the right way. So let me just say, in the vast majority of cases, this is really not an issue. The evidence is usually very clear. Our law enforcement officers do an incredibly good job. In fact, over the last decade, four out of five administrative civil asset forfeitures filed by the federal law enforcement agencies were never even challenged in court. They're not challenging them because this was usually drug money, and they know it was drug money, and they have no basis to contest the forfeitures. Even so, we want to take every precaution to protect the rights of claimants in those cases that are contested in their legitimate defenses. And so today, the Department of Justice is continuing um, issuing legal guidance that will clarify DOJ policy on the adoption of seized assets. It will return us to longstanding DOJ policy. That's all we're doing is return to the policies that existed for over three decades that I used when I was United States Attorney many uh, years ago. Uh, it'll also provide additional supplemental protections for law-abiding Americans. This will make us more effective at bankrupting organized criminals and at safeguarding the property of law-abiding Americans. Under today's guidance, the federal government will not adopt seized property unless the state or local agency involved provides information demonstrating that the seizure was justified at the beginning with probable cause. We will accomplish this through new adoption form, a new adoption form uh, that state and local enforcement must fill out before they agree to adopt, before we, the federal government, would agree to adopt property. 
which would provide the kind of information DEA and the government would need to proceed with the case, uh, and uh, which will include necessary information that the Department of Lawyers uh, can review carefully to make sure the case is proper. Further, law enforcement agencies who wish to participate in the department's equitable sharing program now must provide their officers with enhanced training on asset forfeiture laws. So we all on the same board and well trained on that. The department will adopt smaller seasons of cash uh, between $5,000 or $10,000, for example, only if there exists some level of criminality or with the express concurrence of the United States Attorney's Office. So when I was in the Senate, I worked with Senator Schumer. We had a battle over this issue. Uh, we made modifications in the law to provide better protections against possibilities of abuse. Uh, we, we required probable cause as the burden of proof for the seizure of the property. Uh, that's um, uh, important. It raised the standard that was then in place. And we raised the burden on the government at trial uh, uh, um, and the government has the initial burden in these cases to the same preponderance of evidence standard that is used in virtually all civil lawsuits in America today. In addition, if the government lost the case, our legislation um, would make it such that the government would then pay the attorney's fees of the claimant who won the case. We believe those programs are improved in the safety and effectiveness of the program at that time. Further, to better protect claimants, the department will expedite the review of civil asset forfeiture cases. State and local law enforcement agencies requesting federal adoption must do so within 15 calendar days following the seizure. Now, put some pressure on your officers, but if they, they should be able to do that in 15 days. Uh, and we don't want to be holding money and waiting for months uh, for uh, some sort of uh, evidence to come in. We need to move on these cases so a defense can be prepared if necessary. The adopting federal agency must then send notice to interested policy parties within 45 days of the seizure. That cuts our time. So this is twice as fast a review as required by the statute, by the law. This, is, this streamlined process will ensure that people receive speedy resolutions on their cases and that rightful owners will get their property back as soon as possible. In addition to these safeguards on federal adoptions, I'm asking our Department of Attorneys to proceed with caution when handling forfeitures of involved vehicles and residences, especially if those vehicles or residences are in different names. We just need to be careful uh, how we handle that. Some of the complaints have resolved, revolved around those kind of cases. I think that the Department of uh, Attorneys should think hard before they handle these kind of cases, and we're directing them to do just that. Just like uh, with the cash seizures, if we operate this program in a careful and responsible way, something I believe the American people expect and deserve a, a, uh, with a program like this, the Department's Federal Asset Forfeiture Program will be an effective tool while at the same time protecting the rights of property owners. Finally, I'm directing agencies and components adopting seized property to prioritize assets that will most effectively advance our overall goal of reducing violent crime. We need to send a clear message that crime does not pay. This policy is effective immediately and applies to all new requests for adoptions by our state and local officials. With this new policy, the American people can be confident knowing that we are following uh, the law and are taking action to defund criminals and at the same time protecting the rights of law-abiding citizens. Thank you all for being here. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to work with you in partnership. We are well aware that 85% of law officers are state and local law officers, and this partnership uh, has so many advantages. Forfeiture sharing bonds us even tighter together uh, and, and makes these partnerships and task forces work, uh, as you all know, and that's why you've been so 
uh, clear in your request that the Department of Justice move in this direction. I'm really proud of Rod Rosenstein, uh, my Deputy Attorney General. Uh, he's had 27 years in the Department, 12 as United States Attorney. He knows these issues exceedingly well, has worked with them uh, for many, many years. So would any, I would love it if any of you um, would like to share some comments and thoughts at this time. 